On this week's weekly video fishing forecast, fisherman senior editor Fred Galafaro has an update on circle hooks and striped bass. I'll have some details on local freshwater action and Paul McCain will show us how to tie the mop fly. Plus we have some fishing reports trickling in, all here at thenewfisherman.com. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. The March issue of The Fisherman magazine is out now on newsstands and online. Jerry Audit has a great article on finding fish along the sand beach. Jim Hutchinson has more information on the hot topic of circle hooks for the upcoming striped bass season. And for you anglers that trail your boat, Tom Melton has an informative read on maintaining your trailers to have no issues for the upcoming season. All this and much more in the March issue. News 12 meteorologist Rich Von Owen will send us his more detailed weather forecast come April when there is more fishing opportunity. Until then, remember be sure to check out News 12 for the latest weather before you head out on the water. Fisherman Senior Editor Fred Galfaro has an update on circle hooks as it relates to striped bass. Fred? Hey, thanks Matt. And uh, Still getting questions on these circle hook regulations for bait fishing for striped bass. Basically, is it in effect right now because there are some folks that are targeting striped bass, catch and release fishing on the west end of the island, um, or when does it go in effect? And right now it is not in effect. ASMFC has required all coastal states to initiate a circle hook regulation by this season, by the 2021 season. And New York has set out uh, proposed regulations. You can see the full regulations uh, by going to the link below and they are accepting comments on those proposed regs until Monday, March 8th. If you feel there should be some exemptions, such as right now they consider pork rind a natural bait, which means if you use pork rind on a bucktail, uh, you're fishing illegally because bucktails just don't come with circle hooks. Uh, so you can express your feelings by uh, emailing fw.marine at dec.newyork uh, dot gov, um, or you can mail to the address below. On the saltwater front, um, again, not much fishing going on in the past few weeks, obviously because of the weather, but um, right now we're into a spell of mild weather. It looks like it's going to stick around for a while, but the weekend is still looking sketchy, calling for uh, fi Friday looks really good, but come Saturday, uh, rain south 10 to 15, gust to 20, 3 to 4 foot seas. Sunday, uh, they're looking at west 10 to 15, gust to 20, with three to five foot seas. So if you're planning on getting offshore on a party boat this weekend, I would suggest you be sure to call ahead, check with your captain, make sure they're sailing. Uh, as far as herring go, not mu getting much in the way of herring reports either. Uh, that spell of cold weather seemed to have dropped water temperatures in the bays and inlets and moved the herring off to deeper water. But again, we have a nice spell of mild weather. Hopefully that gets the action going again. Matt, back to you. If you missed the live Circle Hooks seminar we broadcasted a few weeks back, I put the link in the description. The seminar was hosted by New Jersey and Delaware Managing Editor Jim Hutchinson and had lots of info and workarounds to comply with the new regulations. I had a chance to check out the Sweetwater yesterday now that we had a good thaw. Alright guys, so finally the lakes are starting to thaw out. I'm on a lake, it's completely thawed out now. We're, I think we're starting to see a break in the weather. Uh, once the lakes thaw out, it could be some really good fishing in the lakes, especially for pickerel and yellow perch. I've been using small spinning rods like this and utilizing small little paddle tail grubs like this. Uh, this is a 16th ounce jig head, go light on the line as well. Keep it nice and light to tackle, you're going to have a lot of fun. Um, like I said, there's a break in the weather. Looks good for the next week. Definitely try and get out. If you're gonna go out on like a kayak or a small boat, definitely wear your inflatable PFD. But if you're going from shore, you have great opportunities as well. So get out there and give it a shot. Just one more reminder, guys. Aside from the spinning rod, try the fly rod as well. Something like a four or five weight is perfect. Small streamers, nymphs, they would work perfect for yellow perch. Pickerel as well. There's a lot of pickerel on the lake this time of year. It's a really good warning way to fish. Go out and give it a shot. Joe Bensavenga went looking for white perch in Brookhaven, but found that the holdover bass were too aggressive and plentiful to give the perch a chance. With our flying freshwater report, we have Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters. Hello, Matt. Well, with this 50 degree weather today, and it's going to be in the high 40s for the rest of the week, the snow is going to disappear. Fishing is still, still going good. People are doing well. 
Guys are going up upstate now and fishing. There's a lot, a lot to do. Uh, me, I'm actually out here checking out, looking for locations and looking for access points. Uh, I'm out here in, uh, in uh, actually in, you know, the South Shore in Nassau County, and there's a lot of parks here. And I always said, you know what, these great access points. But guess what I found when I came here? It's, it's like, it's ridiculous. I don't understand this. Can you see that right there? Come on, County Executive Curran. Open up these parts. Let's do some fishing. It's a harmless outdoor sport. So, well, anyway, that's my rant for the week. And uh, hopefully we're going to have great fishing in a few weeks. All my trips have been posted on my website. So take a look. Check it out. And tight lines, everybody. Stay tuned to the end of the video to learn how to tie the mop fly with pole. From the Fire Island area in Great South Bay, let's check in with Captain Al Lorenzetti. Hi, Matt. Uh, Fire Island report. Uh, I think one of the head boats made it out. They did a wreck trip, and I think they caught pretty well. But, you know, not much on the fishing front. But uh, I just happened to be down here at Trophy Tackle. And uh, they got in a bunch of, a whole bunch of great stuff by this company, uh, Savage. They're making these, uh, these jigs. That would be good. I'm sure tuna fish would jump all over this. And then I love these. A lead head eel. Very, very realistic. And I could just see swimming one of these, casting one of these, and retrieving it slowly through a bunker pod. I think the bass will jump all over it. So anyway, the weather seems to be breaking a little bit. Also a note, a lot of uh, additional rail cars were dumped on all of the reefs off the south shore. So there's all kinds of new structure to fish out there. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting started. So here we are, almost March 1st, beginning of flounder season years ago. Not this year, but it's going to get better. We'll have fun. Let's check in with Chris Ludwig. Hey, thanks, Matt. What's going on, guys? So this last week, I have some good news and bad news. Let's start with the bad news, which is I only caught a few small trout. But the good news is I found a large body of fat fish on the down end of this stream underneath the bridge, and I know exactly what I have to do to adjust my technique to catch them next time. Moving forward, so what we were using were these gulp alive angle worms. They look like little earthworms, very thin profile. Works great for these trout, as well as these things, the power bait mice tails. And the reason I think that we didn't catch these big fish is because they were hanging along the bank underneath these like hanging branches. There was one that was just scaling the wall underneath this bridge. And there was one that was very finicky that just kept going from rock pile to that hanging bank back to the bridge. And I couldn't let a bait sit long enough before these small fish got to it and those big fish were just out. They needed to be finessed and I don't think I had the time to get to them correctly. So I'm going to hunt them this week and I think I'll be back to you next week with some good success. Other than that, I hope you guys have been good and take care. Remember to like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and tap on the bell to be notified instantly when we post a new video on YouTube. Check out this week's description on YouTube for all the related links and more information. The March issue of The Fisherman Magazine is out now, so look in your mailbox or visit thefisherman.com. See you all here every Thursday, right here at theallnewfisherman.com. Well, Matt, here it is. It's still winter. We're coming towards this. I could see the light at the end of the tunnel, but my boxes look a little thin. So I'm tying flies. That's what I do a lot in the wintertime, I tie flies. And it's just, it's just a stress reliever. It's just great. You will never save money tying flies. I'm going to be right honest up for it. Now, as far as tying flies, my philosophy on tying flies is simple. You see these videos, the guys are spending 20 minutes tying flies, and it only takes me a second to lose it into a trees or on the bottom on the rocks. So I like to have simple flies. And the first fly I'm going to tie for you is a very simple fly. I'm almost ashamed to talk about it, but... It is the mop fly. Very simple fly, deadly, deadly fly. But it's so simple, I'm embarrassed. Until I catch fish, then I'm not embarrassed anymore. And it, you can tie this in all different colors. And what the main ingredient is a mop. It's one of these. So all you do is you, you're gonna cut one of these off and that's where we're gonna, that's the main thing. Everything else is extra. You can make it as fancy as you want or not. <clears throat> so, let's get to the vise. Well, this is, like I said, a very simple fly. Basically, it's only got a few ingredients. Uh, I'm using a hook. Uh, and I, this is actually uh, a wide gap so, uh, 
saltwater hook, but you could use it in freshwater size six. I like to use six, eights, and tens, depending where I fish. First thing you do is you take down the barb, you crimp the barb, and the reason is several reasons. First of all, to get the bead around the bend, you won't need to crimp the barb down. But also, in the Connecticut, it is the rule that you must use barbless hooks. Also, if you do hook yourself, a lot easier to get out of you. So, we do put the bead on, and now we're going to attach our thread. I built a little bit of a, a thread base right here, and the idea is to give it a little bit of traction. The, the shaft of, this, of the hook is a little, it's, you know, it's slippery. I'm going to take on my, uh, my mop, which I cut off already, I'm just going to tie a little bit. I take a little bit of off at the end, and I tie this in right here. Now, at this point, you could be as fancy as you want. You can leave it if you want. It will catch fish. But I like to jazz it up a little bit and make myself feel better about using these. So I'm actually going to use a little stas to add a little flash to it, a little color. You could use dubbing. You could use uh, feathers. You could use whatever you feel comfortable with. But I'm going to use a stas. And bring my thread right up. Now, I palmer. But each time I palmer, this is called palmering, wrapping the hackle forward. I'm going to pull the hackle back so I don't trap the hackle as I'm wrapping it up. I wrap it right up to the bead. And I'm going to throw a little loop, tie it in. And force it down and reach in there and cut it cut it off make a couple wraps to tie it down secure it take my whip finisher and cut it off that's how I do it. I could do these in a roughly one every two and a half minutes. Uh, it's so easy to tie. It catches a lot of fish. Well, uh, Matt, as you can see, this is a very simple fly to tie. And uh, the main goal is that if you spend more time tying the fly than you're going to take to lose it, it's not a good thing. But this fly works anywhere. I've caught fish. I've caught steelhead. I've caught um, trout upstate. And it is a killer on the connect quad. And you can tie it in all different colors. It's not that, not that hard to tie. And if you want more information, please give the shop a call or go to my website, riverbayoutfitters.com. Sign up for my newsletter because we have a lot of trips and a lot of classes coming up. So until uh, next week, tie lines, everybody. Steigercraft boats built by people who fish our waters. Serious English Chew Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.